Hi, I'm Josh Murphy, Research Analyst at Fund Calibre. Today, I've been joined by Rob Brewis, co-manager of the Aubrey Global Emerging Markets Opportunity Fund. Rob, how are you today? I'm good, thanks, Josh. And how are you? Uh, I'm very well, thanks. Um, bit chilly, but um, we, we can move past that. Um, let's, get, let's get straight to it then, Rob. Perhaps we can start with China, um, which is the, the largest emerging market and one which has had certainly a torrid 12 months. Are you still happy to invest there? Yeah, absolutely. I, you're right, it's been a, it's been a tough uh, period uh, in China, but uh, just to take a step back, I mean, we, we do invest in companies, not, not countries. Uh, and there are some really excellent, well-run businesses in China um, that we're very happy to invest in. Um, that's the first thing. I mean, the second thing really is, you know, we focus on the consumer and that's probably been the worst of all worlds this year. Um, consumer confidence is, 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 uh, is dire and, and, and for, for the obvious reasons. Um, and very much people are saving, not spending. But I, I think the, the, you can't get too uh, down about that. And, and actually, when you look at the potential, um, uh, you know, there's something like five trillion dollars worth of additional um, uh, in, uh, deposits built up uh, and, and savings this year. Uh, which have not been spent and have not been invested anywhere. Um, and equivalent, I mean, if you think about that, in, I mean, that's a, almost equivalent of the entire retail sales that China uh, did in 2019. So it's a huge number. Uh, and if, if only a portion of that starts to be, uh, to be spent again, it, it could be potentially very interesting next year. That certainly is interesting. But I- India is, is actually your, your largest country waiting. Is, is that market too expensive now? Well, I think it, it, that's that's the sort of common perception, but I think we would we would disagree. I mean, the, the you know India is up slightly this year, um, it, it, so so largely largely flat. If you like, some of our stocks have, have uh, one or two of them have done a bit better. Um, you know, we have one Baron Beverages that has, has has nearly doubled it. Well, has doubled this year, but but if broadly speaking, the market's flat. Earnings have been very very strong, and uh, our, you know our average growth is running at about forty percent uh, this year. So um, actually, it, it, it's potentially cheaper on average than it than it was this time last year, and and let's face it, it's still probably the most exciting emerging market story. Um, very strong growth, inflation peaking uh, and and starting to fall. There was a very good uh, inflation number just recently, um, and an investment cycle picking up. So um, so we would probably disagree with the consensus that India is 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 not expensive really for what you get. That does make sense. Um, this fund is looking to tap into um, emerging market consumer um, and, the, and the growth in consumption. Is there a cost of living crisis in emerging markets like there is here? Um, is the consumer still strong? Yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting question, and 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 the, the cost cost of living are up for sure for for consumers everywhere, as as we know. But but actually, the diff, probably the difference is wages have been growing in most emerging markets as well. So uh, it's it, people don't feel it quite so so badly. I mean, certainly at the lower end of the spectrum, where um, you know daily living, food, and 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 fuel costs are high, uh, high proportions of your spending. I think they've suffered worse. And you look at the rural side of India, for example, which is, uh, has has struggled a bit. But the fact is that. A lot of these costs are starting to come down now. Um, I mentioned the, the latest Indian CPI, which was uh, back below six percent, which is, uh, you know, largely because of food prices falling, which is 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 good for the for for that uh, that end of the spectrum. Um, and, and the other thing to remember is that you know emerging markets were never in our in our sort of zero inflation, zero rates world that the developed world was. Um, so it, the shock is has been much less. So yes, Indian inflation has gone from four to six. But it's not gone from zero to ten, as we've seen in uh, you know in our part of the world. So it, it, it's actually um, you know it's 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 not been really sort of dramatic, and I think that is it, it's definitely peaking off and and actually looks better for 2023. After India and China, Indonesia is your largest country rating. It's perhaps less well known among investors. So can you tell us what you like about it? What are the opportunities there? Yeah, it's it's um you know it's. It's the biggest country in Southeast Asia, 250 million people, uh, young population, um, GDP per capita about 4,000. So it's you know it's, it's well above India, but still a long way behind somewhere like China. Um, and I think you know it, Indonesia has, has struggled a bit to to attract its fair share of investment over the years. Um, yes, it has commodities which have helped, 
Um, but it, it, it is, it's changed the labor rules recently, which has made it much more easy for, 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 for people to, uh, to, to invest in, uh, in, in, in manufacturing and that sort of thing. And I think it's starting to, to come through. Um, I mean, the other thing is the, the, the current government, when they first came in, introduced dramatic hikes in, in minimum wage um, uh, for, for a number of years. Um, and that was pretty tough for, uh, I mean, obviously it was good for the consumers, but it was pretty tough for companies. Um, we're getting to the stage now where, where that's, that, that, those, that, those dramatic changes are not happening, but you know, the consumers are generally a little bit better off than they were, um, but it's easier for companies. So, so I think the, you know, the, the profitability outlook for, for companies in the retail sector, we expect, uh, uh, sector, um, you know, we have one, uh, Sombra Alfaria, which is a, um, uh, op the biggest operator of, of mini marts, if you like, um, you know, the outlook for them uh, is starting to look very good. Uh, and moving away from Asia, if I might, um, uh, Rob, there's recently been a, a change in government in Brazil. Do you think that that change is positive? Will this create more opportunities there? Um, I, I think the, 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 the new government has, has at least uh, removed that uncertainty uh, from uh, the, you know, we've been worried about the elections for the last year or so because, you know, it, it was close, to, too close to call and, uh, and we weren't sure of the, of the policies that, that either was going to bring. Um, at least that is passed. Uh, we're starting to understand the, the, the Lula government and, you know, it, it looks like, the, the, you know, he, he, his most more populist tendencies will be reined in by um, a fairly middle of the road uh, government. Um, so, so that's good. I think the, you know, the, the, the bigger issue for Brazil is that it, it's, it's one of the ones that has had a real inflationary problem this, this cycle. And, um, you know, but that, and, and interest rates have gone up to sort of 12, 13% again, you know, you know, very high levels, which has really been very, very tough for the consumer. Um, but again, you know, we had a, a, an, inf an inflation number recently, which is, is, is half that level now, down to sort of six, 7%. Uh, the inflationary sort of pulse seems to have just gone through the system now. Uh, and I think, you know, once that comes in, interest rates will come down. Uh, and, and I think the other thing that's happened is that, particularly in our area of, of interest, the consumer stocks, you know, they've had a massive derating de in the last year or so. Um, and I think at, at some point in 2023, there'll, there'll, there'll be an opportunity to, uh, to really pick up some, uh, some bargains there. And to wrap up, could you tell us about one or two of your holdings, please? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'll, um, I'll give you one in China and one in India. Um, uh, it's probably the, the, the best. Uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is, is, is a company called Proya Cosmetics. Um, which is, it's the leading uh, local skincare brand uh, in China. It's a very high value for money uh, a product. Uh, it's built up a pretty good brand trust over the years. Um, it's still, it's growing its share rapidly, but it's still only at 4% or thereabouts, 80% uh, online sales, uh, very strong online marketing presence. But one thing about it is that it's, it's an example of a business that's been really resilient through the last uh, year or so uh, in China. Um, the stock price is actually up this year, 12% uh, or so, which is not a lot, but it's, uh, it's an awful lot better than, than most others in China. Um, and, and revenue growth has continued at 30% um, this year, which is, is really a fantastic result. And I think going back to that, your first question, it's one of the reasons why we still invest in China. There are plenty of these uh, really high quality businesses um, if you can find them. Um, the second one, just uh, on India, is uh, is something called Ica Motors, which is a, a relatively recent addition to the portfolio. It's a stock we owned uh, from about 2015 to 2018, um, and it's the maker of, of the uh, iconic Royal Enfield um, motorcycles, uh, which are the dominant premium end uh, product uh, in India. They, they've they've had a really tough couple of years, um, partly because. Uh, India jumped the gun and introduced some really um, uh, sort of European standard uh, emission controls. Uh, and for various other reasons, you know, the, the cost of the bikes went up quite a lot um, and, and so obviously sales, sales declined. The fact is we're, we're, we're coming through that, that, that sort of tough phase. Um, they've just introduced a new model, which is called the Hunter, which is um, a slightly cheaper version. I mean, it's still 1800 quid for um, the, the, on the road. Uh, but it's still it, it lower than the sort of 2,000 pounds that you'd pay for the classic. Um, 
but it's uh, it's attracting a younger audience and, and sales have been really good. So um, it, it's also starting to export. Uh, exports are now 17, 18% of, of revenues and, and growing. So you might well see a few more of them dotted around the streets of the, of, of the UK. But um, it's a it's a really strong, strong position uh, and and one that we've, uh, you know, we're, we're pleased to be back into in the, in the portfolio. Well, thank you very much, Rob. That was extremely interesting. If you'd like to find out more about the Aubrey Global Emerging Markets Opportunities Fund, please visit fundcaliber.com. Thank you.